Hey, what's going on, everyone? I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope that you're all having a great day. And thank you for joining me here today for your daily dose of Star Wars. Today's video is going to be a little more rant style, as I've only done a couple of those in the past, but I wanted to give it a go again because today I wanted to talk about some of the backlash that's been happening from The Last Jedi and why it's happening and what it means. So the backlash for The Last Jedi is real. It's not like The Force Awakens where you only see it online. This is actually happening. Like There are a lot of fans who are sincerely displeased with this movie. And for some of the big reasons that I wanted to point out, with one of them being that it seems like some people think that Ryan had to mold the characters to fit his storyline rather than keeping them the way they were. For example, a lot of people feel like Ryan made Luke fit into a mold that could fit for the Luke Skywalker he wanted to create rather than having Mark play the character that he's best known for. As Mark said, he's had to think of Luke as a different character. Uh, another example of this backlash would be that J.J. Abrams, a lot of people think, left a lot of, as he would call them, mystery boxes, all scattered throughout the film, which he did. Example, Ray's vision, what does that mean? Ray's parents, who are they? Uh, it's just all of these things that J.J. left, and he left all of these mysteries, and the closer we got to the movie, we found out through interviews with Adam Driver or Ryan Johnson, or just in general, that they wouldn't be answering those mystery boxes that J.J. dropped in The Force Awakens. And that's probably not going to sit well with a lot of people because we've spent two years in the fandom community here trying to figure out all of those little mystery boxes that J.J. put in. And now we have to wait maybe another two years or we're never going to find out because Ryan didn't address those. And if J.J. chooses to not address those, and if he just continues to go off of Ryan's story, rather than answering some of Ryan's story and some of the story he started, then we're never going to know a lot of these answers, and that's not going to sit well with a lot of people either. Another thing is Snoke. Kylo Ren was a villain, but he was clearly not like the big head honcho. He was the Darth Vader, more or less, and Snoke is the Emperor. And what happened was, rather than we thinking that Snoke was going to make it through all three episodes. I certainly thought he was going to make it till the end of the next episode before Adam Driver put a lightsaber through him. But we got that this episode, which leaves a lot of people thinking that since Rey has already bested Kylo Ren in lightsaber and she's already kind of matched his strength with the Force according to Luke and Yoda, and now... He's the only big bad left for episode 9, so either he has to become ridiculously more powerful or something's gotta happen because Rey can already beat him. We've seen it in The Force Awakens. She was able to escape him in The Last Jedi. So it doesn't, some people are under the impression that he's not really a real threat to Rey, which, you know, kind of makes sense and I can kind of understand why you would say that in a way, especially since there's no one above Kylo Ren now. There's no one else there to put him in check, which means he's either going to have to go completely crazy or he's going to have to die or something just to show how these two characters are different. Because Luke said that he's only seen this raw strength once before and that was in Ben Solo and that would be the two of them, which would tell us that they're equal in power. And Snoke gave us a bit of an explanation for that, but it's not sitting well with a lot of people. and. As he rose in the darkness, his equal in the light would rise. And speaking of Snoke, the Origins video that I put up that where Pablo Hidalgo tells us about that in the Visual Dictionary, a lot of the comments on that video were um, really upset because they didn't tell us that in the movie. But fans are unhappy that they now have to watch the movie and then go buy all of these different books and comics and graphic novels just to understand the full picture and the full story of what was actually happening. Like you have to grab the visual dictionary and then when the actual book comes out, the novelization of the movie, which is also canon, comes out, you have to buy that to get the additional like scenes or the additional dialogue or the, just everything else that we didn't see in the movie, which it seems that there's becoming more of this every time a new movie comes out because this is another way that we interpret this as them trying to make more money off of us. And that's not really sitting well with fans because why would you want to have to go pay this much to see the movie? You're going to buy the movie on Blu-ray. You're probably going to buy it on digital too. And then on top of all of that, after seeing the movie at least two or three times probably for some of us, 
are going to go buy another $30, $40 worth of books just to understand everything that happened. Why couldn't they just tell us everything that happened in the movie? That's probably one of the bigger things of why fans are unhappy along with all of the mystery boxes that we weren't given answers to and how it didn't really line up with the two movies and the whole big big issue is that it doesn't seem that they have an actual direction of where they're going anymore it seems that they laid out one movie at a time and that he would pitch his movie the next guy would pitch his movie and the next guy would pitch his movie and they weren't really all working together there were probably only a couple of people Kathleen Kennedy probably being one Pablo Hidalgo probably being another one who actually knew all three movies and what the entire timeline of this trilogy was going to be but it doesn't seem that since they've had all of these directors changes that they and all of these real life incidences that they haven't gone back to revise this to make it work and make it more uh, streamlined and that's probably the other thing that's really bothering a lot of people I know that's kind of getting on my nerves is that they're doing all of these things but it doesn't really seem that they have an end game they don't because they didn't answer JJ's Force Awakens issues and all of his mystery boxes. They just left him there. So what does that tell me for The Last Jedi? Oh, we get a bunch more questions we don't know the answer to. And that may be the point, but that's probably not... They have to know that the, all of us are not really into that and just letting these mysteries be. But of course, they'll probably pop out a canon novel some point answering all of these questions that we want to know the answer to. But I've, I'm going to get off the backlash train. That's just... I just wanted to give everyone... Um, even if you really like the movie, I've seen the movie three times and I, I like it a little more each time. Uh, I just wanted to give everyone an idea of what was going on and why the backlash was happening and some of the major issues that were revolving around it. And I hope I was able to do that for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you're a daily coffee drinker or want to become one, be sure to hit that bell down there to receive a notification on your iOS or Android device the second a new video goes live. That wraps things up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, keep loving Star Wars, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.